One of the first things you'll want to do with remoting, of course, is enable it. Now, PowerShell remoting only needs to be turned on on the computers that need to receive a remoting connection. Now, in a lot of environments, that might be every single computer. Keep in mind that PowerShell is available all the way back to Windows XP, and that includes the remoting functionality. So the easiest way to do this on a single computer is to just run Enable PS Remoting. You'll be prompted a couple of times. This will uh, start the WinRM service, set it to automatically start. It will register Windows PowerShell as an endpoint for WinRM. It will uh, create an exception in the Windows firewall for non-encrypted uh, WS Man or WS Management traffic. So pretty much everything all in one. Now, of course, there is a group policy way to do this. And if you're in a non-domain environment, there's a little bit more trickiness that kind of needs to go into the setup. Also, if you have machines that are on the other side of a proxy server, then there's some special trickiness that has to happen. And you'll find most of the trickiness explained in the About Remote Troubleshooting Help Topic. This is a quite lengthy topic. Um, it will discuss how to enable remoting, how to do that in an enterprise, which is the group policy technique. There's how to enable listeners by using a group policy, how to do a firewall exception with a group policy, um, how to, let's see, provide administrator credentials, uh, turn that on for non-administrators if for some wacky reason you want to do that, uh, enable remoting for administrators coming from other domains, uh, using an IP address instead of the computer name, work group based computers, in other words, a non-domain environment. So pretty much all of those little edge cases are covered in that help file. So it's a good one to know about. Once remoting is turned on, you're ready to use it.